Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you all about the 11 romances that I think you need to read this spring. I do these videos every couple of months in lieu of wrap-ups, so I'm telling you about only the romances that I've absolutely loved that I've read over the past couple of months. And I read a lot of romance, so I like to think that what I have right here in front of me are books that you would be excited to pick up as well. But before we get into it, I want to tell you about something else that I love. The sponsor of today's video, Book of the Month. Super excited to be working with Book of the Month once again. They are a super popular and fast-growing online book service for readers. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers discover books they love. Their team vets hundreds of books each month and gives readers their choice from a curated selection of new and early release titles, so you can spend more time reading and less time researching. Plus, Book of the Month is risk-free. You can skip any month, any time, and you will not be charged. Plus, they have the best price for new release hardcover fiction. You can get your first book for just $9.99 with code SPRING. And the two books that I picked from this month's selections are the Only Survivors by Megan Miranda and Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sinfeld. I feel like I always go to the thriller and romances whenever I am picking from Book of the Month, but they have such good selections. The Only Survivors follows a group of former students who were on a bus that went into a ravine and a lot of their fellow classmates passed away. They have decided that they are going to meet up regularly after this event occurred. Things kind of go amiss, I think, one of the times that they're supposed to meet up. This sounds so juicy and I'm so excited to give this one a try. Also, super excited for romantic comedy. I've read other books by this author in the past and have absolutely loved them. So this book's about our main character, Sally, who is a sketch writer. She observes this phenomenon when one of the writers of the show that she works with ends up dating a really beautiful woman. She's like, how does this always happen? How do these ugly guys bag these really attractive women? It could never happen in the reverse, except for whenever she kind of like hits it off with a really successful and handsome pop singer. So I think this book has probably some really great social commentary as this author tends to do in her books. So excited to give this one a try. I'm sure it's going to be the perfect blend of like romance with a little bit something more. Head to bookthemonth.com to check out the other titles for this month and use code SPRING to get your first book for just $9.99. Thanks again to Book the Month for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Now let's talk about all of the romances that I've read over the past couple of months that have really buttered my biscuit. First up we have Hail Mary by Candy Steiner. This is a book that I read, oh I want to say back in like February, the very beginning. Absolutely adored this book. It is the last book in the Red Zone Rival series, but they're all standalone so you can kind of check them out as you please. I've actually never read the first book in the series, but I was like able to go into the second, third, and fourth books completely fine. So this book follows our two main characters, Leo and Mary. At the start of the story, we get to see kind of their relationship history. In the last book, there is kind of a hint that these two kind of knew each other before the start of the book, um, because all of these books kind of have a similar cast of characters, like they're all friends, that sort of thing. We find out that Leo and Mary have this sort of like childhood friends to lovers situation, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. Essentially, Leo and Mary played video games together, and they didn't really know who the other person was in real life until they find out that they actually attend the same school together. And he doesn't really know who she is when he meets her again in college. So things are a little bit tricky. She has this knowledge, but she also is attracted to this guy. So just from the beginning, you kind of have this like heartbroken feeling for her going into the book. And it really, I think, helps you go through this romance and be really connected to both characters um, and really feel for what they're going through. The book ends up being this really delightful, like guy falls first situation. She is very hesitant to enter into a relationship with a guy that's sort of broken her heart before. And he is just really enamored with how beautiful she is. She's different than all of the other girls that he has dated in the past. She is plus size. She is completely tattooed. She wants to be a tattoo artist. She's actually not in college like the other people in the series. And getting to see him really be supportive of all that she is and all that she wants to do is really awesome. I will say the third act conflict in this book it did annoy me just a touch, but it made a lot of sense given what these characters are like and also given their age demographic. Like the thing that happens at the end, I was like kind of rolling my eyes out like, oh god, this is so immature. Like this would never happen. But really like thinking about what happened, I was like, you know what? Okay, that actually makes sense given their ages. I thought this was a really spoon-worthy romance. I really thought the uh, steamier scenes were quite steamy, quite spicy, if you will. I know that spicy is like a, a book talk thing <laughs> that people like to say. That's also why it is in uh, the title of this video. Not all of these romances are like, you know, off the charts, kinky raunchy, but you know, got a slob on the knob of the old YouTube algorithm sometimes. Anyway, I love this. I give this book four stars. I would highly recommend you pick up this entire series. I really liked this book. I want to say the second book in the series is like the five star for me, but the third and the fourth are also really fantastic. Fantastic. So anyway, uh, the series is over. You can pick them all up at this point. That's my my first pick for you. Next up, we have a book that I actually purchased a copy of after reading because I enjoyed it so much. And I feel like it's sort of controversial pick, The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. I really enjoyed this book. I didn't want to pick this up for the longest time because I had heard that this was like a closed door romance and that it was corny. And I just, I don't know, I just wasn't really in the market for something like this. But I decided to pick it up kind of on a whim via audiobook. And the audiobook was fantastic. 
fantastic. It was a fantastic listening experience. And when I kind of set aside my preconceived notions, I really fell for this book. I really enjoyed the relationship between Brie and Nathan. And on page, actually, like on paper, if you wrote down all of the tropes that are included in this, it sounds like something I would totally love. So this is sort of a childhood friends to lovers mutual pining situation where this like famous football player and his best friend have had feelings for each other for such a long time, but have just not been willing to act on them. They are both... I don't want to say quite old <laughs> in this story, but I believe he is a professional football player at this point and they've known each other since high school. So they've had many years to kind of build this friendship and this relationship. She knows all of his friends and vice versa. He is so supportive of her dreams. She wants to teach ballet to people who can't necessarily afford lessons, it requires funding and, and donations, and he um, kind of helps support her in that way, even though she's like reluctant to take his money. I don't know. I just loved the relationship on page between these two. It is a little bit silly. It is a little bit over the top at times. So I understand why the reviews are what they are for this book. I don't think everything has to be serious all the time. I think I say that a lot in my videos. Sometimes I roll my eyes when things are a little unserious, but other times I think you have to kind of take a book for what it is. And I don't think this book was going for like deeply emotional, mature romance. Like it is kind of juvenile in a sense, but it's so fun to read about. And sometimes that's all you really need. So I actually really recommend this book. If you've been on the fence about picking it up, if you go in with the right expectations, I think you could have a really fun time with this. I really liked it. Again, it wasn't like super raunchy, obviously. I, I believe this is closed door. It's actually been a little while since I've read this, so I can't entirely remember. It's really sweet. And pick this one up. I think I gave it three stars on Goodreads because like I have a reputation to maintain. But um, I think in hindsight, I probably would bump this to four stars because, you know, um, was it silly? Yes. Was it the best thing I've ever read? No. But was it so fun? Also, yes. Like I had to include it on this list and like I bought a copy of this book. That's how much I enjoyed it. I mean, I did see it like at a half price books. So it's not really the same as paying full price for it, but would recommend. <laughs> Next up on my list is a book that I feel like I never hear people talking about and it is Like You Love Me by Adriana Locke. Adriana Locke, I think, is such a slept on romance author. If you were looking for a new author to kind of dive into on KU, her books, I think, are all in Kindle Unlimited and they are all really freaking fantastic. She has such a way of writing romance that has like very familiar tropes, but they're just done so well that I never really think like, oh, this is boring. So this book's better to main characters, Sophie and Holden. It is a small town romance. Sophie is is in charge of a bed and breakfast or something like that that's kind of run down and it was owned by her grandmother and like kind of bequeathed to her and her sister and she has kind of taken charge of it. She is trying to fix it up to become like a, a viable business. This is kind of challenging because I think they're a little bit behind on taxes until one day Holden walks into her life. I think they might have like gone to high school together or something and she's always thought that he was handsome uh, but she's off of a bad divorce so she is not really like looking for love but Holden unfortunately needs a fiance or a wife ASAP because he ended up lying to the veterinary clinic that he wants to apply to. It's like a really big deal. You know, for him to get in, he needs to like be a family man because the, the person who I guess is in charge of interviews is family man. So Sophie and Holden end up getting married in this book and it is sort of a marriage of convenience situation where he pays off her taxes and she is going to be uh, his fake his fake wife. It's just so delightful seeing these two fall for each other. Again, it's like not the most original plotline, but it doesn't have to be if it's executed well. And this one totally was. Whenever they finally did, um, you know, do the deed, it was properly led up to. It was extremely hot. I loved it. And I also just loved all of the side characters as well. I don't know if there's other books in the series at this point, but I would definitely be willing and ready to read more books in the series because I want to find out more about our heroine's sister and her brother and kind of their relationships because they seem to have uh, like, I don't know, interesting past when it comes to their love lives. So in general, I would just recommend Adriana Locke, but also just this book. It's so fun. And I think you would have a lot of fun with it. Can't remember if I gave this one four or five stars, but it was fantastic. All right. The next one on this list, you know, um, I got this from a graphic for a video that I did where I was reading like the first five books that I saw on Instagram and the graphic said, you may need therapy if you like this book or like these books on this graphic. And I think I've actually read one of them, which I feel like already says all you need to know about me. I decided to pick up Brutal Obsession by S. Mastery. And while this book is absolutely unhinged and it's not for every reader, I wanted to include it because I know so many of y'all really love dark romance and this was a very dark romance. So this book's better to make characters Grayson and Violet at the beginning of the story. Grayson is in the car with another woman. He is inebriated and he ends up crashing into another car at a very high speed, having his passenger and the person in the other car kind of incapacitated, just not doing well. He leaves the scene. It's not until later that we see that the person who he hit was as severely injured, was trying to become a professional ballerina, but her dreams were shattered when her leg was shattered in this accident. And so she kind of hates this guy, but since his dad's a senator, there was kind of some hush money situation going on, so she can't talk about it. Because of the fact that he like fled the scene, he got kicked out of his last university. And guess what university he's now at? 
Violet's University. He can't seem to stay away from this girl. He obsessively kind of follows her around. He doesn't know what he sees in her. He kind of tortures her a little bit. It is definitely not for the faint of heart. I think like you have to know your limits going into a book like this. I think if the synopsis that I told you at the very beginning, like what happens at the very beginning of the book, him basically uh, abandoning a crime scene, like a crime that he committed, if that is a turn off to you, don't pick up this book. Like this is not going to be your cup of tea. But if you're someone who likes dark romance, I think you might like this. There is um, certain things done in the boudoir that are a little unconventional. I would definitely look up trigger warnings for this book. I don't want to, um, you know, say them all aloud because again, YouTube algorithm and or um, no, I would be demonetized if I said all the things during this book. But I think again, this book has the proper audience somewhere, you know, dark romance fans. Y'all are probably thinking like, oh, I've already read that. That, that was so tame. But for me, this was a lot. And I don't know, I had a good time with it. I think mostly because of the way that the book is written. I think if you like Haunting Adeline, I think you might like this because um, give similarly unhinged vibes. I enjoyed this. I ended up giving it four stars. It's one of those books that could have gone either way for me. Could have been a two star, could have been a four star. I liked it enough, give it four stars. And you know, I'm not gonna yuck my own yum. Um, okay, a book that I know that a lot of people have not had a great experience with, but that I have really been enjoying, the more that I think about it, is Secretly Yours by Miss Tessa Bailey. So this book's about our two main characters, Hallie and Julian. Hallie is a gardener, and for a long time, ever since high school, she's had a crush on Julian. He was, I think, three or four years older than her. She was a freshman. He was a senior when they were in high school. She tried to go up to him at a bonfire for a kiss. He was like, ew, no, you're literally a freshman. But now that he's back in town doing some kind of like professorial sabbatical type things, professor at university, he is trying to write his like fiction novel, I guess. Is it fiction? I don't know. In town, like in his mom's, I was gonna say basement house, in his mom's house. <laughs> Hallie finds a way, devises a way, crafts a way to get closer to Julian. And in kind of the midst of this, she starts writing him love letters, saying all the things that she couldn't say to his face and like putting them in a tree along his path that he runs every morning. If this sounds kind of complicated, there are a lot of like random subplots in this book, but what I liked so much was how fun it was. There's something to be said about a Tessa Bailey book. The humor in this book had me audibly laughing in the car next to Hayden as I was reading this book. It's just a fun time. Not everything has to be totally serious. That being said, I also appreciated the romantic elements of the story. I thought that Hallie and Julian's relationship was super cute. I really liked seeing Julian kind of grow over the course of the story. He has some really bad anxiety that he, that kind of makes him hold back from going for the things that he wants. And because of how much he likes Hallie and her kind of like scatterbrained quirkiness, he ends up kind of working through that and growing through that. And I really liked seeing that. Do I think it could have used a little bit more of that? Yes, I do think this book could have been done even better had we honestly like kind of excluded the secret love letters bit and included more in terms of them like sharing things and growing. I think it would have been a five star read for me. It was still a four star though, because it was just fun. It, it was just fun, okay? Sometimes things can just be fun and to be kinky raunchy with a lot of like outdoor moments, if you will. That's all it needed to be. And that's all that it was. And I enjoyed it. That being said, very excited for the next book in the series that comes out in June. I believe it's called Unfortunately Yours, and it is about, I believe, the sister of Julian from this book, so very excited to give that one a go, but don't let the kind of middling reviews scare you away from this one on Goodreads. If you are a Tessa Bailey fan, I firmly believe you will enjoy this. Next up is a book that I do not own a copy of, but I desperately want to, and that is Meeting Millie. This is a sapphic story that I picked up because I was looking at like the top LGBTQ plus picks on Amazon, like the top bestsellers or whatever. This cover totally jumped out to me. It's stunning and also sapphic. And I was like, okay, yeah, I gotta pick this up. Kind of pitched to me as like a friends to lovers, like mutual pining thing. And that's all you need to say. Those are two of my favorite tropes. So I picked this book up and I just really, really, really adored it. I gave this book five stars. Uh, this book's about Millie and Charlotte. Meeting Millie, of course, there's a Millie in the story. Charlotte is our resident lesbian. She has known she's liked women basically her entire life. And throughout the course of the story, Charlotte is just looking for this like deep abiding love. Um, this story is told, I believe, in dual POV and also dual timeline. So you get to see the girls in college and also the girls in present day. I want to say like 10 plus years later, they're in their 30s, um, kind of at the start of this book. And they were best friends in college. We get to see Charlotte kind of coming out to Millie and saying like, hey, I am queer. Millie immediately is like, that's fucked awesome. Let's go to gay bars. Like, I'm going to help you find the love of your life. And over the course of the story, obviously, Charlotte ends up falling for Millie. Millie doesn't reciprocate those feelings because she is ostensibly not queer. Find out that that might not be the case as the story goes on. So it was just so delightful. I loved the dual timeline, dual POV situation. It was kind of giving like fanficy vibes in a sense because of the way that the timeline was kind of like set up. But I just really loved the story. I was so charmed by the relationship. There was a lot of miscommunication going on though. And if that is something that 
really irritates you, I think like maybe this is not the story for you. But it made sense to me because, you know, Charlotte's trying to keep her feelings to herself now that she knows they're not reciprocated, but Millie is starting to gain feelings and she's like, okay, but like I keep these to myself. Like I don't want to hurt Charlotte's feelings or like break her heart, even though I think I like her back. Oh, it was just so good. It was so, so good. Highly recommend picking it up. I will say there are some like language usage choices that I personally wouldn't have made, but I am also not a lesbian. So I, I can't really say uh, whether or not that's like a bad thing, you know, to use those uh, language choices. Anyway, really liked it. Five stars. Fantastic. We're halfway there. Let's continue on. This might be one of my favorite books that I've read this year. Like this, this is definitely top of the list for me. And it's unsurprising because it's Elsie Silver. I read The Front Runner, which is from her, I would say, less popular series, Gold Rush Ranch, I believe. But this book is about our two main characters, Stefan and Mira. We meet them in other books and we know that Stefan is this kind of like misunderstood, grumpy, maybe like bad guy hero. He works for a rival ranch. He owns a rival ranch and he is kind of notorious for being like harsh to his horses. He has a jockey that like rides his racehorses that is not a good guy. Once he finds out this guy is bad, he ends up firing him. But he's just a, a very misunderstood character. And Mira is a vet for kind of the whole town. She is resident at Gold Rush Ranch, the rival ranch. But she also, of course, helps Stefan with his horses. And at the beginning of the story, some circumstances come together where they're going to have to work together in a professional setting. Also, it's going to be like late hours and, you know, a lot of time spent together in the stables. So I just love this story. I love the characterization of both characters. I think that's what made this romance work for me. The trope I was kind of like, whatever. It was a fake dating story. I actually read this for my fake dating or reading fake dating books for a week video. I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to check that one out. For me, again, it was the characters. Stefan has this element of self-loathing because of the trauma in his past that I found so delightful. He never felt like he was good enough for Mira, but he was truly a guy who fell first. He was so into her, just wanted to do everything for her and get her to understand that he wasn't a bad guy that like she thought that he was. Mira is one of the like strongest, and most stoic heroines I think I've read in a while, which I really like. There's nothing wrong with a quirky or bubbly heroine, but sometimes I like to read heroines that are a little bit more like myself. And I really liked reading Mira's character. She was really passionate about her job. She's a vet. Just seeing how caring she was towards animals and how, <laughs> I guess, not really in tune with her emotions she was otherwise. I don't know. I just thought it was kind of charming. I really, I didn't expect to like this one as much as I did, to be honest. Um, I've heard so many things about the second book in the series, A Photo Finish, which I did really love. A five stars too. But I didn't expect to enjoy the other books in the series as much but I think this one is like neck and neck with a photo finish for me. Like it was so, so good. Five stars pick it up. Who doesn't love a small town horse girl romance, right? Next up are two more books from that fake dating video. I had such good luck, honestly, reading fake dating books for a week. So the first of the two is That Kind of Guy by Talia Hibbert. This book is, I think, one of the only books that I've read from her that isn't in the Brown Sisters trilogy. I think I've read like a Christmas novella or something from her. For the most part, just those three, those three books from her. This book is, I think, like the third book in a series of standalone set in a small town. It is about our two main characters, Zach and Ray. Zach, at the beginning of the story, is coming to terms with his sexuality. He is demisexual, but he has been sleeping with women, not really emotionally attached for a while. And he's starting to realize like that is not him. That's not what he is seeking. And he has just used um, sex to kind of like escape his true feelings almost, or like he thought that was all that he was good for in a sense. So so he comes to terms with his demisexuality as the story progresses, even though he finds himself really attracted to Ray, who is quite a few years older than him. He doesn't want to kind of act on his attraction to her that is based on like the, the friendship and like having known her for a while because he's not sure that she wants the same things that he does. Ray is a recently divorced woman. She has been with the same man for virtually her entire life. I believe she is just turned 40 and she is feeling a little bit directionless and a little bit traumatized from the things that have happened to her. She and her ex-husband were in the same field. They were both authors and she feels a little bit of like professional embarrassment almost for, from the fact that they were divorced, etc. And so you get to see her kind of work through her feelings and emotions while she fake dates Zach because um, she's going to this like conference that she knows her ex-husband's going to be at. She needs some support. And so Zach kind of takes her there. And that is kind of where their like feelings blossom for each other. They've been friends for a while and a lot of that is done off page, much to my like disappointment. I really like on page um, friendships development, but you get to see them fighting their feelings for each other and um, falling into bed together. And it is just so great. If you have read any Talia Hibbert before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Her steamy scenes are just out of this world. She gets you to get in the heads of the characters so well that you are just dying by the time that they get together. This book is not overly long. It's under 300 pages. And I think it's a book that would be a, such a good palate cleanser if you are sick of the same old, same old. Um, you have emotionally intelligent characters. You have demisexuality, which I feel like we hardly ever see in romance. So I highly recommend picking this one up. Again, it's just such a good book. Four stars. Loved it. Moving on. Next up, we have Honey and Spice. This book's about our two main characters, Kiki and Malachi. Another fake dating situation, of course. This book was so fun. I actually listened to the audiobook. I got it from Libro FM. 
put off reading it for so long because I assumed that this book wasn't actually romance. I thought that this book was kind of like Emily Henry-esque, like literary romance, which is not bad, but it's not typically my cup of tea. So I was like, oh, I'll put it off. Eventually I'll read it. But so many of y'all recommended this as a great fake dating story. And I was like, I've got it. I've got a copy of it. Like, I'm gonna go ahead and read it. And I'm so glad that I did. So Kiki, our female main character, she's in university and she has this like really successful kind of like talk radio show almost. I think she does play music, but she also kind of gives advice to other women her age about dating and about like staying away from boys. And she actually kind of gets herself in some hot water when the like new guy in town, the guy that all of the women are obsessed with because he's like a different kind of fuck boy, when she ends up kind of falling for him herself. So she like gives this advice, like stay away from this guy. And then she kind of gets with the guy and everyone's like side eyeing her, of course. So she ends up fake dating this guy to kind of like give legitimacy to the fact that she's been kind of like messing around with him. And also because I believe like her academic advisor advises her to hang out with more the fake dating situation, let me just tell you, in this book is kind of ridiculous. The way that it is written, the way that Kiki sort of like self-actualizes and, and sees herself, not only hilarious, but also really fun and like slightly relatable. I loved her relationship with Malachi. Their banter and their dynamic is just like bar none, like one of the best things I've read all year. I just really enjoyed this book and it is unlike anything else that I've ever read. I wouldn't say pick this book up if you were looking for, again, like a more straightforward pick. Comparing this to something like an Elsie Silver book, which is like, this is going to be romance, it's going to be kind of smutty, whatever. However, this book is not like that necessarily. It's not to say that there's no smutty scenes, but um, it definitely it definitely has a different feel to it. So definitely know that going in. But if you're looking for something funny and something a little different, I would highly recommend this one. I give it five stars. And then my last two books, one of which I have a copy of, the other I do not. Just My Type by Fallon Ballard is a book that was recommended highly to me by a patron, Heather. Again, I'm going to say thank you for putting this in my like line of sight. I actually think I had this on my most anticipated list this year anyway. But when it comes to traditionally published romance, I won't lie, I'm always a little bit like hesitant going into them. I never expect truly to like them. But this one blew me away. This book's better two main characters, Lana and Seth. Lana has been working at this publication for about eight years doing like dating and relationship column work. She doesn't like it. She wants to be doing more of like the culture and arts piece of it, mostly in like media reviewing, right? Like she wants to review TV shows and talk about like her obsession with Marvel, things like that. Things that are more akin to what she like actually enjoys. I guess she's just been too cowardly to um, like speak up for herself up until this point. She's like, she has great coworkers. She likes her work environment. And she gets kind of complacent, which I think is actually very relatable. But Lana's world gets a little shaken up when someone new comes to town. Seth, her like high school sweetheart ex-boyfriend, and he and she are going to be competing for the opportunity to get their own column at a newspaper. So he is going to try to become a like faithful partner almost or like get into a like long-term relationship. And she is going to try to be single. And they are going to, I guess, compete to see who can write the best articles about that within like a 10 week period. They've also like crafted lists for each other of things that the other person has to do to like accomplish their goals because obviously like the other person is more of an expert in that field. He is a serial dater. She's a serial monogamist, whatever. And uh, getting to see them carry out these tasks is so fun. Getting to see them have this sort of like enemies to lovers mutual pining situation was also just freaking great. This book's only told, I believe, from our heroine's point of view. So we don't really get to see Seth's feelings, but they are so apparent on page the way that this man has been obsessed with this heroine forever. It's just amazing. I mean, I'm sorry. That is like my favorite trope ever. We love a guy that falls first. We love a guy that has had feelings for someone forever and has just never given up on them. Like despite the distance, despite them breaking up, he has never forgotten about her. And he actually like, I I'm not gonna spoil it. Okay, just pick this book up. It's so charming. It's so fun. I love the way that this book is written too. Really accessible, really easy to read. And I liked the sense of humor in here too. There's a lot of like text conversations and Slack conversations. And it just felt really like authentic to, I guess like my age demographic, yield millennials or whatever. So love this. This is great. Pick it up. Five stars. Five stars. This is definitely going to end up on my best of the year list. And then lastly, in spot number 11, we have another Elsie Silver book. Did I read this book because I thought it would be a five-star read and because I wanted not just 10 books on this list, but 11? Yes, I did. Um, it wasn't quite a five-star, but it was also still really, really great. So A False Start by Miss Elsie Silver is about our two main characters, Griffin and Nadia. Nadia is the younger brother of Stefan from the last book. And I really was curious about her story. She is really strong-willed, has a big attitude, and a lot of trauma in her past that is similar to Stefan's trauma. They have like um, some childhood trauma together. I had a feeling she would end up with Griffin, who is Stefan's best friend. So he's like, I want to say mid thirties. She is 21 at the start of the story. They both are just like working through their trauma and working through their past together. This is sort of an age gap, forbidden romance with uh, big themes of like healing from trauma and, and healing from your past. Our hero is a recovering alcoholic um, and he is, you know, kind of dealing with some of the re repercussions of what he's done in his, in his life because of his 
addiction to alcohol. So it's definitely not a lighthearted read, I would say, but it definitely has that signature L.C. Silver um, combination of like real world issues with like a lot of heartfelt smutty moments. This book was really, really steamy. It was really fun to read. And it's just the kind of book that I think anyone could pick up and just like have a really good time with. Again, despite kind of the harder hitting issues. I think if you're in the market for, you know, a small town horse girl romance, again, I just think like all of Elsie Silver's books are fantastic. I love the Chestnut Spring series. I love the Goldash Ranch series. She can do no wrong, you know, from one horse girl to another. Yeehaw. But those are the 11 books that really shucked my corn over the past couple of months. I feel like I've gotten a couple of comments recently talking about how like you don't even like books. This has been one of the best reading years that I've had to date and um, I'm hoping it continues on in that direction. I'm having again such fun times just like listening to my heart and following my heart where the romance leads, you know? So anyway, hope you found something great. I'll leave links in the description for all these books so you don't have to go hunting, but I love y'all so much. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.